Hey guys, Anton the Tech Chap, and this is the new Apple Vision Pro. This is as close as I can get. If I touch it, they will throw me out. But you can hear how excited those guys are out there. There's a lot to unpack here. Okay, I have some thoughts. It's been 24 hours now since I've seen the Apple Vision Pro headset. I'm back in my hotel room here, and I spent about an hour there yesterday trying to write this script because it's kind of like a first look, a first impressions. There's so many questions we don't know, and there's also so much to talk about. It's an entirely new product range. We haven't had one since the Apple Watch like eight years ago. It's a first generation device. Uh, so obviously there's a lot of kinks to be worked out. It's very expensive like the original iPhone was. I mean, very few people actually bought the original iPhone. And it's also very easy when you're at Apple Park and there's a big new announcement to get caught up in the Apple hype. Because the truth is, when we think about AR and VR, I think most of us kind of just roll our eyes and there's a collective groan. We just haven't seen a really good implementation of it. I think Microsoft's HoloLens was perhaps the closest to this Vision Pro headset that we've seen. That was quite a few years ago now. But I think the difference here is Apple does have a pretty good track record of not necessarily being the first out with new uh, technologies or products, but when they do come out with it, they do it right. And you can tell they've thrown the absolute kitchen sink at this in terms of R&D and resources. I mean, there's inspiration from every product category. You've got the uh, digital crown that we've got on the Apple Watch uh, on the top of the headset, which uh, adjusts the immersion and also the environment. You've got incredibly high resolution displays. We're talking 4K per eye. You've got the M2 chip powering it, which is the same architecture you'll find in the MacBooks, although no doubt this will be a lower power version. And that is along with a new R1 chip, which handles all the processing of the crazy amount of sensors. There's a whole bunch of cameras, including 3D cameras, so you can actually capture and watch back uh, content in 3D. And then everything's spatial. I think spatial was the word of the day yesterday from the speakers built into the headset along the strap, uh, although you can also use your own AirPod Pros, which they probably recommend if you want noise cancelling because you won't get that from the built-in speakers. And Apple is calling this whole thing spatial computing. They didn't mention VR or virtual reality at all. It is, of course, much more like augmented or mixed reality because I think they want to get away from that. VR is always just putting a big box on your head, closing yourself off to the world and it being very uh, solitary and a bit clunky and dark and horrible. The Vision Pro is all about augmented reality. So you can still see the real world. Uh, there is full, almost lagless pass through in color, of course. So you can still go about your day. You can talk to people, look at your phone, go to the bathroom, make a sandwich, all while having the mixed reality headset on. You might feel a bit weird doing all that though, because it is basically like having a pair of ski goggles on your face. And you're also gonna have a cable going from the headset, pull it down your back into your pocket where the battery pack will be. And actually this was something that was a bit confusing uh, or perhaps they misspoke at the launch event because it seemed like you'd have two hours of battery from the headset alone and then all day battery when you plugged it into the battery pack. That is not the case. You'll get the two hours of battery with it connected to the battery pack, but then all day if you have it plugged into a USB-C wall outlet or your laptop or something. So from the battery pack, you'll get two hours. You can't use it without that. I'm a bit curious if you do have a sudden disconnection, will you just instantly lose everything or can it you know, maintain it for a couple of minutes? I'm not sure yet. That's something we'll have to try, um, but certainly you're not gonna have any length of time in it without the battery pack. But then we have this digital persona because the big question going into this was how would people actually see you, especially on FaceTime calls when you've got a headset on, you have eye tracking and all that, but you haven't got a camera inside the headset. How would they see your face? Well, the answer is digital persona. So at the beginning, during the setup process, you will scan your face with the front of the headset and the cameras on the front, and it will create a virtual digital persona of you. Not an avatar, they do not want to call it that. And then that digital version of you is what people will see if they FaceTime with you, call you while you've got the headset on. And then on the front of the headset, we have this OLED screen. And when you're fully immersed in your world and you can't see the outside, you know, you're in VR mode essentially, that will display these very fancy, uh, colorful swirls. But then when you're talking to someone or you want your face to be seen, it'll transition to this digital persona, this eyesight as they call it. So they'll see your virtual cheeks and eyes. There's a lot of room for the uncanny valley here. But let's take a step back. What's it actually like to use? And also, who is this for? Who's going to spend $3,500 on an AR headset? Firstly, the headband for the Vision Pro will come in different sizes. And also, there's an adjustment wheel at the back to make it looser or tighter. And if you wear glasses, you'll also be able to get Zeiss optical inserts for your prescription so you can see with a full crystal clear clarity. Then you'll register your optic ID, which is like the next generation of touch ID and face ID. And this uses iris recognition. And that's how you'll be able to unlock this and also do password fills and pay for things. 
Then after a brief setup, you essentially have an iPad home screen pop up in front of you. I think what's going to be key to the Vision Pro's success is the quality of the screens, because they're using micro OLED screens with a 4K resolution per eye. There's no mention of the refresh rate yet, but this will support HDR. This is the highest quality display on any headset. And then you can do whatever you like, bring up the Photos app, Safari, you can even look at your MacBook and then it will screen share to your headset. So potentially you might not need an external monitor if you've got a 100 foot display of your desktop filling your whole field of view. You can also adjust the level of immersion, so how much of the real world you see versus a digital background. In terms of how you control it, you basically use your hands, your voice, or your eyes. We do have eye tracking built in, so you can look at the search bar in Safari and start talking. As you look at different apps, they'll be highlighted. And you can have a full screen app in front of you, you can have a few side by side, you can stack them in sort of 3D layers in the world, and they all cast shadows and have a kind of physicality to it that we don't really see with any other headset. Now bear in mind, we weren't actually able to record or capture any use of the headset, so we kind of have to rely on Apple's own very shiny and well-produced marketing materials to kind of demo what this is capable of. And it does all look extremely impressive. This is a proper next generation AR device. But the question is, just because it's higher quality and more seamless and we have some nice Apple apps, are we actually going to want to use it? Is it going to end up like pretty much any other AR or VR headset where we use it for a couple of weeks, we love it, it's magical, but then it gets put over there and eventually in a cupboard and we end up not using it. And that would be a shame if you just spent $3,500. But certainly with Apple's hardware and software and, you know, history of getting it right, there is a lot to be excited about here. Certainly it is a pro device, especially with that price tag. We're not all going to be rushing out and buying one, but it is the first generation of a whole new product line. So I think the conclusion right now is let's wait and see. But what do you think? Would you be tempted to maybe buy one of these next year? Let me know what you make of the Vision Pro in the comments below. And if you did enjoy this video, a like and subscribe would be amazing. And I'll see you next time right here on the Tech Chat.